and I'm Fabrice Pichet from Los Cabos, Mexico. He works with uh, Qigong, specifically for people getting stem cell therapy for Lyme and mold. People fly all over the world to work with him. I'm honored to be here learning and working with him as well. So today we want to talk a little bit about headaches that are associated with mold exposure because this is one of the most frustrating aspects that people have. Uh, among others, of course, but the headaches, they don't seem to go away with typical pain medications. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, a lot of it comes from the transformation that the mold does within the body. Mm -hmm. um, because the mold really wants to create an hospitable environment for its growth, it kind of changes the way the immune system and the body function in certain area, creating a cesspool in which it can really try to develop. A and cesspool. So <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. That's that's why it's mold and it grows. And that causes the generalized inflammatory reaction that yes. is spiking the headaches, uh, among other mm -hmm. factors. Yeah. Exactly. And so within that environment, even when you take regular medication, because the immune system and the body cannot send the effect of the medication in that area, you need to find another tool to add to it so that the 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 distribution system is actually functioning to kill the space, kill the mold, and clean it up. Mm -hmm. So one of the aspects we find is that oftentimes, uh, especially the frontal and side headaches, are really influenced by the gut health in mm -hmm. particular. So yes, we always look at the mold. However, the mold in and of itself, it's going to be thriving if there's a lack of diversity. Mm -hmm. Just like if a forest lacks diversity, biodiversity then you get this kind of monoculture so if you have a field of wheat that's very easy to grow when you have a plowed field and nothing else is growing there but if you take some seeds for, of wheat and you throw them into a tropical rainforest within an hour those seeds have begun to either rot or they've uh, been eaten by other animals so the same is true with mold there are bacteria which and, and fungi which will be eating this mold if there's enough diversity in the body mm -hmm. So cultivating a very healthy microbiome is very crucial for these type of mold-centered headaches or mold-influenced mm -hmm. headaches. Yes. What yeah. are some exercises that you have people do to give very minimal effort? I mean, someone's just mm -hmm. laid out, they have no energy, exhausted. Mm -hmm. What is the one tiny intervention that you'll have people do in order to get maximum benefit for the least uh, mm -hmm. physical investment? seated exercise okay very simple just by thank you just by having a straight posture feeling that you can breathe properly in your abdomen keeping your feet flat on the ground and simply kind of playing the piano finding the form parallel to the ground and parallel to each other so they make kind of this square area go back a bit here so just kind of keeping this posture gently, allowing the body to relax and start to feel how metabolism is starting to be activated a little more. And as you hold gently the posture for a few minutes, you'll start to feel a lot warmer. The idea is to activate metabolism so that the heat can actually start to augment the flow of blood circulating through the body. Or just by putting um, your hands like this? Just by keeping the posture. Relaxing. Okay. So, so it's more about the alignment. It's more about the alignment. So it's, it's not like reps of this. You're not moving. Okay. You're actually just standing, which is different than what we're used to see in the Western aerobic type of exercise. Mm -hmm. And by keeping that posture, the metabolism starts to increase, which makes everything flow in your body, activating, warming up. And so that warm up aspect starts to dry the damp area in which the mole loves to grow. Mm -hmm. Mole loves damp, warm up your body, get rid of that, circulate the lymph so that the body can clean it up. And that's just this simple exercise that you can be seated, even lying down with a small adjustment uh, if you're too weak to do that. Mm -hmm. And as you get better being able to practice it seated, you can add an extra degree of intensity by doing it standing and so on and so forth and, and within the span of a few weeks people start to feel a lot more energized within their daily life and are able to start to do 
more through it. That, of course, comes in conjunction with the other treatment that they do. Just this on its own is probably not enough to um, deal with toxic mold. Mm -hmm. But when you mix everything together, it improves the overall effect because the metabolism starts to move a lot more. Mm -hmm. And so can absorb much better all the different medication or treatment that the person is receiving as well. Mm -hmm. Whether it's botanical uh, herbal medicine from Chinese medicine or more of a Western approach, it just helped to improve the effect overall. Mm. That's great. An exercise I like to do after uh, this, if you want to get advanced with it, is a simple stomach massage. And the idea with this is just to make yourself burp or fart as much as you can. So the standing exercise that he did, you can do that either seated or standing. It's, it's going to be very easy to do anywhere. The abdominal massage, you're going to want to do that on a balcony, in the garage, somewhere away from other people because you're going to be burping and farting quite a bit. And this gas exchange is important because when people have uh, mold toxicity and it's accompanied with you know water retention, obesity, you can detect the changes on the breath, not just because people have bad breath, but I mean the percentage of gases like nitrogen or uh, nitric oxide in particular will be elevated. People in states of obesity and other forms of toxicity will have higher levels of methane. So you want to be getting these gases out. And even as you start to stand there uh, with good posture, already it will start to move. If you're kind of just laid like this on the couch, just kind of uh, bunched up, you're pinched off, you're not going to have the healthy gas exchange that you need in order to really get healthy gut dysbiosis cleared up I'm sorry, you get the gut dysbiosis cleared up into healthy gut microbiome. So in order to do this, you need to remember that the environment around us here is very oxygen rich because, you know, we're near the beach, there are plants everywhere. It's just very hospitable for humans to be here. However, if we were living in a cloud of methane, we would kick over and die like this. And the same is true of your healthy gut bacteria. They're not going to be able to compete with the mold when the gaseous environment inside your intestinal lining around the endothelium, if it's not optimized for healthy gut bacteria, then unhealthy bacteria and molds will begin to thrive. And then your body responds with a generalized immune reaction. And this is where we get a lot of the really weird symptoms associated with mold toxicity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So two exercises, first of all, standing, relax, get your posture unkinked, and then if you want to go advanced, begin with deep belly breathing so that your front and back and the sides all feel like they're very gently expanding and contracting. And if you want to get super advanced, start with the abdominal massage so that you're getting yourself burping and farting a lot. And this is, I find, very effective for specifically the uh, frontal and side headaches associated with mold toxicity. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. Thank you. Have a good day.